We have shown the beauty within live aboard life. Luxurious anchorages to stunning sails. In hard times, we found a way to laugh. But now, it's time to address reality before we find ourselves in trouble, both financially and mentally. This is our story of what we are up to after leaving Grenada. The shark. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> uh, so we're back in Huntington Beach, California. And we are staying with my parents. They have been gracious enough to allow us into their home. While we are enjoying some of the perks of land life that include Wi-Fi and endless power and hot water, we are getting a lot of stuff done. <laughs> we got more news. I don't know why I'm doing the Uncle Sam thing. <laughs> I don't know if I could express really how much I love sailing, love sailing with Katie and, and being on Naughty. There are so many things I love about sailing and the lifestyle. The freedom to be able to just pull up anchor and head to a different part of a country or head to a different country was really at our fingertips. We're the type of people that really just don't like sitting in the same place doing the same thing every day. Being able to experience Greece uh, Italy, Spain, uh, all the countries that we ended up going to was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I loved getting the boat ready. Being in the boatyard in Greece, we made some new friends and some friends I think that we'll talk to for quite a long time. I think one of the things I liked the most was the quiet. There were some moments that we were on anchor in these beautiful anchorages that were just so quiet. <laughs> it was pretty comical at times, especially early in the morning, just enjoying a cup of coffee. And then out of nowhere, we just hear a sneeze that travels across the water so clearly. <laughs> and that's all you could hear. Getting the solar panels and, you know, making power for the first time with just one panel leaning on the edge of the hull. Uh, while we were in what we called Perfect Bay, and that was the most fantastic place that we had been at that time. One of my favorite sails was when we were sailing from Greece to Italy. Greece to Italy. It was probably one of my most uh, fond memories with catching some of our first big fish. Pick up real hard. Got a tuna! Uh, was probably one of the the best sales. It wasn't too fast, it wasn't too slow, the swells were just right, and uh, we were just getting used to some of our our night shifts. So uh, nothing but stars and moon is uh, pretty phenomenal. Katie and I uh, going to Amalfi. Oh my gosh, Amalfi. The dreamland that is Amalfi was freaking amazing. <laughs> Boat life was really the first time I got to see the coastline from the water. Seeing it all lit up at night, and seeing the, the beauty that it is on an everyday basis. We got to try limoncello sorbet. Lemon is my favorite flavor for dessert, anything lemon. If it comes in lemon, I will I will take it that way. Just seeing that picturesque town 
nestled in those beautiful lush hills. Oh, I took my breath away. I didn't know a city could be that beautiful. Oh my gosh. I absolutely loved was obviously just being on water. So being on the boat surrounded by water all the time was, was quite the treat figure out what we were doing that day and if I could sneak in a, a quick dip in the water to just swim a couple laps around the, the boat. That was always a really good start to the morning. When we left Italy and uh, headed over to Sardinia, that was one of those moments to me that really, really made me think like I love being on this boat. I love being on a sailboat and the adventure that it brought, you know, going, uh, you know, five days, four days across a sea to, you know, Sardinia and having this, you know, little bird come and hang out with us for a night. It was a crazy storm over there with just lightning dancing around the sky leaving Sardinia and headed our way to uh, Majorca. That's where some of the fun started for us as well. We lost our steering. What happened? The steering cable severed. <gasps> and I think we were maybe 70 miles off the coast of Majorca, just heading into nighttime. I mean, we could do nothing but laugh. I, could only, I couldn't get partial steering and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And I'm like, oh no, this is why the steering cable broke. And then I remembered that I clamped the vice grips at the end of it. And it was just <laughs> preventing me from... Uh, we got some family on board uh, for a week and got to explore a bunch of remote places in Greece. It, it was nice to be able to show them how we lived. Uh, not necessarily for their approval, but for them to experience what we wanted, and I think they enjoyed it. The stars. To actually have that much darkness, to be able to see the Milky Way satellites shooting stars. And there was a time during the Atlantic crossing when absolutely no light pollution no clouds in the sky and we were actually sailing through phytoplankton these little planktons that when they get agitated in the water they glow blue i felt like we were in space we were just a spaceship flying through space with stars up above and phytoplankton stars down below i really loved how sailing brought katie and i uh, closer together on levels that we never would have experienced on land. Uh, we didn't work together. Um, so working together as a unit and figuring that out was uh, a mind, was absolutely mind-blowing. Working with Katie really shows me how strong of a partner that I have and that's something I would trade in for anything. So obviously we love sailing. We love the lifestyle and all the things that come with it. That's not true, don't say that. It didn't jive with us, but I was like, don't say that. When we got into sailing, uh, what we were after was slowing life down quite a bit. Trying to slow life down like we originally intended uh, possibly was a bit naive. I owned a tattoo shop for 10 years. Katie uh, worked night shift as an embalmer and we wanted to be able to pull back and give ourselves more time to be creative and do more of the things that we think that we should be doing. Painting was one of those things that we wanted to really be able to sit down and focus on. Painting is the reason that Brian and I actually met. Saying that we 
want to paint as a hobby is an understatement. It is a huge part of our life. It's one thing to paint when you're in your own studio. Painting on a boat became 10 times harder than just, just trying to paint. We both really like to paint. When you're being pushed by weather, you're constantly on the go and so you need to reposition or you need to take care of all of the things to be able to stay in that anchorage which you know just puts more of a workload on you bi-weekly weekly managing the boat uh, took quite a lot of effort keeping things dry and keeping the condensation down the water out of the bilges which Katie did a magnificent job of maintaining uh, the engines or the lines uh, or the electronics and, and getting all of those uh, upgraded and updated uh, was a bit more than uh, expected. Managing the weather was a bit more than what we had anticipated uh, with a sailboat. You can't just start the engines and go, you know, 50 miles away from the storm that's coming. 50 miles is a full day of sailing, depending on the weather. Uh, you could have a lot of swell that day. Time consuming for you, not as relaxed as you thought. With Katie's seasickness getting worse and worse as we seem to go, that left things a little bit more on me when we would sail. When we would do sales that were a few days, I wasn't cleaning, emptying the trash, doing laundry. So when we would be on anchor, all of those chores would just pile up. So instead of painting and enjoying our few days anchored, I would be catching up on chores for a day or two. I did take medications and tried everything. <laughs> uh, the, the medications did work really well and they were great other than the side effects blurred vision food tasting like poison the medication worked but it came with its own can of worms of being uncomfortable <laughs> you don't like poison? no oh. but things that had sugar in it and fruit tasted fine so if you are planning on taking medication. <laughs> That's so hard to believe, especially since <laughs> yeah. she's a total chocolate junkie. Uh. Continue. <laughs> it was just one more thing to kind of have on our plate while sailing. Okay. Okay. Are you sure? No. You ready? Never. Maybe. Go. Okay. With the continuing cost of maintenance on a boat, it was a little bit more than what we planned for uh, cost-wise. Not, not a whole lot. What it really opened our eyes to was that maintenance in the continuing of it. You're in salt water. Everything is degrading. There's always going to be things to fix and repair, which is fine. I like doing that, tinkering. The possibilities of something really going bad years down the road could have a much bigger impact. We wanted to quit while we were ahead. We didn't want to get so far in debt to where we were uncomfortable. It was one of those things where we assessed that it, it, it would be better to move now or go to the next phase of trying a lifestyle than to run ourselves so deep into a hole that even attempting to sell Naughty would be extremely difficult, which Naughty is up for sale. Surprise! <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> uh, Naughty is up for sale down in Grenada. She is in tip-top shape. Everything is working. Everything is prime. She looks beautiful. It makes me a little sad that we're not out there sailing her after uh, the little bit of work that we did to just get her in prime shape. 
I think we played things smart, though. I think we played things to a point where we could be at right now. We enjoyed being on Naughty. We explored, we sailed our asses off uh, for that whole time. But now it's, it's time to possibly do the next adventure and take it from there.